Hello, welcome to Neoscribe. There's an element that's so dangerous that it was once called the chemist killer. And believe it or not, this element may be the key to unlocking next-gen battery technology. We're talking about fluorine, the 13th most abundant element on Earth, 24th most abundant in the universe. Fluorine is the ninth element on the periodic table, nine also representing its atomic number, meaning that it has nine protons in its nucleus. But how dangerous is it? Fluorine takes the form of a pale yellow diatomic gas in standard conditions. Diatomic means a molecule of two atoms. The gas is extremely toxic. Just a concentration of 25 parts per million is potentially lethal. The gas will violently react to just about anything except a few of the noble gases. And many scientists from the 19th century were seriously poisoned, blinded, or even killed working with the substance, including Belgian chemist Pauline Loyer and French chemist Jerome Niclet. It all boils down to electronegativity, which refers to how easily an electron is attracted to an atom. And fluorine just so happens to be the most electronegative element known. You see, electrons orbit the nucleus of atoms at various distances depending on the energy level. Each level forms a shell. Each shell has a maximum number of electrons that it can hold all the way to the most outer shell called the valence shell. Every atom wants to have the maximum amount of electrons in their valence shell because that makes the atom stable. And the closer an atom is to filling its valence shell, the stronger it will attract electrons from other atoms. Going back to fluorine, it has seven electrons in its valence shell, and it just needs one more electron to fill it up. Hence, it's electronegativity, and why it's so corrosive and dangerous. All right, so what does this have to do with next-gen battery technology? Before you freak out about the thought of putting a highly reactive substance next to your ear, scientists is using fluoride, not fluorine. Now, fluoride is the anion of fluorine, meaning that it has an extra electron and a negative charge. Fluoride is stable, having a full valence shell. Now let's turn our attention back to the awesome battery research. The research is a collaboration between esteemed research facilities, including the Honda Research Institute, Caltech, and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. The researchers have made a huge breakthrough in fluoride ion battery, or FIB, technology. The chemistry behind FIB allows rechargeable batteries to have eight times the energy density compared to current lithium ion batteries. Imagine having to charge your phone just one time a week or having an electric car with the 2800 kilometer range. This may one day be a reality because FIBs use metal fluorides, which is a chemical compound containing two fluoride atoms for every one metal atom, most likely copper. This means that the metal fluoride can transfer two electrons from just three atoms. The typical lithium ion battery uses a lithium cobalt oxide compound that only has one lithium ion atom for every cobalt and every two oxygen atoms. Lithium cobalt oxide can only transfer one electron from four atoms. So you can see how FIB technology research is very promising and it dates back to the 1970s, but the major roadblock up until this point has been the electrolytes, which is the solution that allows the ions to travel between the electrodes of the battery. The issue with fluoride ions is that they have only been able to dissolve into solid electrolytes. Because of this, the battery would only work at 150 degrees Celsius or around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. But the team of Honda and Caltech researchers have figured out how to make a fluoride ion battery that works at room temperature using a liquid solution called BTFE. They performed computer simulations of BTFE to see how well it could keep fluoride ions stable while allowing them to move inside the batteries. The simulations showed how BTFE molecules surround the fluoride and dissolve it at room temperature. Based on the data collected, the team tweaked the BTFE solution with additives, which improved the solution's performance and stability. Although this is a major breakthrough with the technology, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done before the technology is ready to be implemented commercially. The battery is still in the early stages of development, and the next step is to improve the durability of the electrodes. Researchers will need to figure out how to prevent the electrodes from corroding into the electrolyte. As mentioned before, fluorine is the 13th most abundant element on Earth, compared to lithium at 33rd and cobalt at 32nd. 
and fluoride already has an established supply chain, chances are it's in your toothpaste and it's in the tap water of many countries around the world. In other words, it's great that this technology is not based on some promising exotic material that is expensive to produce, that never leaves the lab, but I honestly don't see this technology being commercialized anytime soon. We may have to wait five to 10 years. It's tough to say at this point, but at least we have yet another next gen battery technology to keep our eye on. And if nothing else, fluoride ion battery technology serves as a good excuse to illustrate why chemistry is awesome. All right, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe, and I'll see you on the next journey.